Okay. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, in the in this uh, occasion, I'm I'm gonna talk about this uh, leakage pressure for gas uh, get less uh, super hydrophobic fluids interaction for model of Lavana chip systems. Um, uh, this paper uh, is is about uh, uh, how uh, the authors. Uh, measure or how they uh, characterize the behavior of the of the pressures inside of the uh, one microfluidic device uh, using a different uh, approach because uh, most of the forces are are, are involved uh, for example capillary forces uh, inside of this microfluidic device the microfluidic device is designed in a in a, in a polymer it's a, a new polymer and inside of the channels there are a super hydrophobic um, F, uh, solution that is recovered uh, inside of the channels and they studied what is the behavior of these capillary forces uh, uh, when there are a gap between the microfluidic device as you see in the figure one uh, B part yeah and also they are interested in, in investigate in investigate what happened with these uh, capillary forces uh, with our gap or they call it unclamped and we are clamped but there are a, a tiny uh, a tiny move uh, a tiny uh, uh, un, unaligned the tiny aligned and, and sorry huge aligned a uh, huge unaligned and tiny unaligned uh, between uh, both models, they they use a a, a, a water, yeah, uh, to measure the the drop of the uh, water on the pass between this part and this part, and they also use a, a camera in order to measure uh, the contact the contact angle between these. Uh, these models uh, under these conditions. Okay, uh, we'll see. Um, sorry, uh, we'll see. Um, uh, this is the forces that they are interested in in a study, and also are involved in this kind in this uh, in this experiment. When this situation, uh, you have capillary number that is related with viscous uh, viscous forces and surface tension. And also the web number that also include the diameter of this drop, and also the tension forces, yeah. and the, finally the bond number that is related with the uh, uh, gravity forces, and also uh, uh, tension forces. Uh, first, they they use a model in order to predict what is the behavior of the of the pressure when uh, when the uh, the drop uh, cross or, or, or the drop are in the inlet and also the breeze increased but what happened when the the, the drop uh, 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 pass through this the yeah, depression decreases and they propose a uh, one um, one model uh, we will see uh, the model but this is the uh, the microfluidic device they use this uh, points in order to align or disalign the microfluid the the microfluidic device that is at the center as I told you the drop will be pass through this and they put the camera also to to see um, this is the super hydrophobic uh, image uh, uh, solution of this uh, SEM uh, and this is the the angle that they measure with the camera and we will see the uh, how they measure these uh, conditions. The, this is an example of one drop, uh, how they uh, 
transport the liquid uh, be, uh, inside of the, these gaskets and they use a, a dye with red food coloring in order to see. Uh, they use a fluorescent camera and they measure this. Uh, first, uh, they use a, a model in order to compare uh, what is the, the points that we will, we will see in the experiments also. As I told you, they're using different uh, uh, modes, or uh, like I, as I told you, unclamped and clamped. But the idea is use when there are aligned, when there are the, a, a tiny unaligned and huge unaligned. And they compare with the model in order to see uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, what is the relation or what is the percentage between uh, the model and the experiments and they uh, uh, sorry they also uh, represent this with the percentage and they uh, use this um, um, uh, model in order to see what is the best experiments that uh, fit with the model because they, the, the idea of this is, is uh, or the author say that the idea is to, to use for different fluids and in this case they use water but uh, with the model they can predict difference and also they can fit with the model and also with experiments uh, uh, these, ex uh, these, these numbers are related. Uh, uh, finally, uh, they prove that this uh, experiment is is new because uh, there in the literature they report there are not these kind of experiments with a gap between these models and also the they found the the flow that is indispensable and also the pressure that we are able to to measure with these experiments. Okay, this is all. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, this is my topic, integration of, of polymeric membrane, um, the electric sphere assemblies in microfluidic chips for enhanced uh, contrast imaging with low magnification systems. Um, um, okay, uh, uh, microscopy system are spacing to detail uh, optical design. Um, a sphere is used in combination with low magnification objectives to cost effectively increase the resolution and sensitivity of the optical detection system. Um, uh, a barium, a barium titanium spheres that are an, a polymeric membranes were used, uh, cause, um, were used um, um, a custom design chip was manufactured to indicate the, the spheres and uh, this improved the ima image of microorganisms. Uh, in this part, uh, performing an analysis of the, the electric spheres, the optimal configuration for a highly refractive sphere is obtained. Um, in this part, in, in part A, uh, consists of a sphere embed in PDMS where the index coins with the material of the sphere, the polymer at the uh, surrounding medium increase the angle of the optical system. And um, part B, this effect is used to generate resolution and contrast gains for low magnification lens. Here is an NACE detection, uh, detection zone for a uh, a 10x, 10, 10x objective that approximates the peak of angle of a 100x objective with the, the, same, the same immersion. Um, in, in this part, uh, to simplify the manufacturing of the PDMS, uh, microstructure membranes uh, were created with custom designs and integrated spheres to increase resolution and sensitivity. Um, a a fine pattern was designed 
Lazan uh, Crow Mask to make the uh, the silicium mold using to to melt the PDMS uh, with uh, with sphere conventional photolithography was used to to model uh, one per five uh, micrometer um, and 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 this part. Um, in, in, in part A, uh, this chip was used to analyze uh, bacteria, uh, one, uh, one uh, and two micrometer in aqueous me uh, medium. Uh, the chip consists of one millimeter inside and, and six uh, micrometer high. Um, in part B, a large narrow channel keeps hydraulic resistance low, a 100 micrometer a diameter. A pillars prevent the micro channel rule from a collapsing. And, and in this part, in part C, a, the central region of the canal includes a, a wide variety of structures. Uh, for the immobilization of bacteria long-term imaging and uh, trap units are designed similar to, um, uh, to a feature uh, uh, one per two micrometer and, uh, and uh, uh, zero per eight micrometer opening to, to trap E. coli samples on some, on some on the trap is filed the, the flow through the, uh, the um, preventing additional bacteria from being dropped. And part D, after cleaning, a suspension of bacteria was injected inject into, into canal on into channels. A buffer was uh, injected to, to retain three bacteria. A constant flow rate of a, a zero per uh, 12 microliters per, min, per minute is in yet to prevent uh, the scale of bacteria confined to immobilization size during image in, in, in 80 minutes. And uh, conclusion, uh, low magnification system may be suitable uh, for cost is effective uh, portable system for on-seed analysis. Thanks. I'm going to share my screen. Can everybody see it? Yes. Thank you for your confirmation. OK, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to inform you about compu computational solution to prevent aeronautics accidents caused uh, by way turbulence using machine learning. Uh, this paper proposes a solution to the integration of the automatic dependent uh, surveillance broadcast ADSB system uh, by machine learning methods in order to perform real time pilot alert to avoid possible accidents. As, as we know, uh, several accidents has occurred or where wires aircraft enter the wake turbulence of larger aircraft. We can see here in Figure 1 an accident generated by wake turbulence in, in an A. 380 uh, from fly uh, Qantas in uh, 2018, where the second Qantas fly hits uh, the way two minutes later, sending uh, it into North Dice. Uh, on the other hand, a quake turbulence is a disturbance in the atmosphere uh, observed behind an aircraft as it moves through the air, as we see here in Fuel 2, it is generated by pressure differential between the airplane's winds, upper and lower air surfaces, which uh, causes the air from bottom to be forces to flow uh, to the tips of the of the winds uh, to, to generate an intense vortex. This work brings a computational, uh, a computational solution machine learning for four methods, uh, such as naive based uh, decision tree, uh, k, uh, k nearest neighbors, uh, by propagation neural networks, 
The main goal uh, is using information previously obtained by the ADSB uh, radios uh, applied machine learning algorithm with safety separation rules to, to predict the, the presence and category of weight uh, turbulence from other aircraft. Uh, Fuel 3, so three inputs uh, which are defined as separation minimum, uh, minimum weighting time, and turbulence weight categories. Uh, the output uh, is weight turbulence detection alarm message. Uh, regarding methodology uh, to perform, regarding methodology to, to perform the training of uh, the machine learning algorithm uh, was use the Euro control data set as we see here in table four and, and five, which contain uh, the minimum safe separation or required wearing time uh, for a safe takeoff, giving uh, a weight turbulence uh, category. On the other hand, uh, algorithm used to classify the data is presented here in algorithm one. The data mentioned about set is the most extensive database about weight turbulence and classify uh, them in six category using uh, minimum separation as the metric to support the safe decision. At the same time, uh, the model is trained uh, through historical data using label uh, data. Uh, are labeled as D, as D uh, dangerous or N no hazardous. Uh, so the supervised learning algorithm uh, pilot receive alerts uh, in advance that are severe uh, weight turbulence uh, category aircraft uh, is heading toward a uh, heat anticipate uh, precaution to avoid an accident. Uh, regarding performance evaluation, we can say that the classification result contains four possible cases, as we see here for predict class and the actual class, uh, true positive rate, um, false, uh, false negative rates, false positive rate, uh, true negative rates. Um, furthermore, uh, the co I'm sorry. Furthermore, the confusion matrix contains a uh, very important information for, for understanding the result of algorithm, uh, including uh, the number of instant classified correctly and incorrectly, as well as the number of instant uh, that the algorithm believed to, to be of a type yes, in a true word classified uh, as not or vice versa. At the same time, uh, the performance evaluation result uh, for the machine learning models are, are listed here in table one. Um, we can see that the KNN classifier with parameter uh, one or three and the naive and the naive base a uh, model presenting the best uh, result with an accuracy of over uh, 90% as we, as we see here in table two, uh, the decision uh, three model had an accuracy of over uh, 90, uh, 94%, which similar to KAN with the parameter K, uh, K5. No wonder that the KAN algorithm uh, had one of the best performance because uh, for the solution of the proposed problem, based on uh, on the distance of the nearby aircraft uh, fits perfectly in what the KN algorithm proposed uh, since it used uh, the neighbor principle closer uh, and finally knife base uh, was also very effective in carrying out probabilistic uh, calculation for a uh, event that has uh, not yet occurred and another has already occurred uh, so that's all thank you for your attention Hi, I'm going to, hi everyone, I'm going to finish my talk about this, this work, uh, microfluidic systems for microalgae, uh, microalgal uh, biotechnology. Uh, I'm going to finish with uh, the microsystems uh, for cultivation. Uh, as we know, the microalgae obtain their met metabolic energy through the photosynthesis. So to understanding uh, the various culture uh, parameters, 
that influence the microalgal uh, growth, like uh, measuring the strain productivity, optimizing the cultivation process, and improving the biofuel feedstocks production efficiency. So the main topic that I'm going to, to talk about is the continuous flow microfluidics photobioreactors. Uh, these, uh, these, these systems are platforms that have uh, arrays of miniaturized culture uh, compartments which are few tens to hundreds of micrometers in dimensions and have nano to pico leader uh, scale volumes. Uh, in, these, in, in these platforms, the microalgae samples are loaded, uh, cultured, and analyzed in cell culture compartments under uh, conditions uh, with uh, liquid flow. Uh, the culture uh, factors uh, are uh, light condition, uh, like uh, light intensity, like light uh, cycle, and the wavelength. So as, as we know, uh, these are the most important parameters that can affect the microalgal uh, growth and lipid production. So uh, for example, when, when a study uh, constructs a 96 uh, well microplate uh, integrate with red light em emitting diode uh, arrays uh, where the light intensity and cycle of each culture chamber could be controlled uh, independently. And uh, this was uh, proved and was successfully used to uh, analyze the light uh, dependent growth rates, uh, photosynthetic efficiency and lipid production efficiency of uh, this microalgae uh, Dunaliella teriolecta. Uh, another study developed a microfluidic light controllable a photobioreactor array capable of uh, simultaneously investigating uh, the effect of uh, 64 different light exposure conditions on the growth and lipid production uh, using the microalgae uh, Botryococcus bauni. So in this work, uh, eight different lights, Dark cycles uh, in the platform were produced by filling a microchannel placed uh, perpendicular to the light intensity control channels with either uh, water 100% uh, light transmission or black dye 0% light transmission to generate a different light cycles. Uh, uh, the multiplexed pixel-based irradiance platform. It's capable of controlling all light uh, variables such as intensity, the cycle, and the wavelength. So uh, in this study, in, in another study, a uh, programmable uh, LSD screen with an uh, LED array, LED array uh, backlight, could control all light variables for each culture chamber where microalgal uh, growth under uh, 238 different light conditions could be uh, carried uh, out uh, in parallel. So uh, the microfluidic photobioreactors for uh, examining uh, other culture conditions or parameters such as nutrient availability, CO2, uh, and pH, have also been uh, developed. developed. Uh, in this, uh, another study, they use PDMS microfluidic device to culture and isolate microalgae and uh, examine, examine the effect of nitrogen depriva deprivation on lipid production. As we can see here, uh, this, in this graphic, we can see uh, in, in, in the part A, a microfluidic photobioreactor array for screening light conditions, like uh, uh, as I say, the, the intensity uh, and the 
they control the, the intensity and the cycle of the of the light. And finally, we have a microfluid platform that can perform um, multiple processes, including uh, culturing and analysis of lipid accumulation and lipid extraction. Uh, in this uh, another study, they uh, composed of the, they they built a, a device that was composed of two layers, a cell culture chamber with an an output reservoir on the bottom layer, the microchannel comprised of an, a square micropillar array on the top layer, where the micropillar array served uh, as a piece physical filter to keep the cells within the cell chamber during the lipid extraction process. To develop the different lipid uh, productivities of, um, of this uh, species of microalgae, uh, where successfully analyze and compare. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I will talking about of this article uh, called uh, identifications of other plant use by Senorhabditis elegans for pathogen recognition. Here, uh, they examine the strong in innate attractions of C. elegans for the odor of the pathogenic bacterium, Soratia marcescens, uh, and this attraction will likely facilitates consumption and subsequent intestinal infection that kills the worms after two or three days. First, uh, they identified the bacterial choice index. Uh, for this purpose, they evaluated olfactory preference of C. elegans using a bacterial choice assays in which worms migrate uh, to one of two patches of bacteria on opposite sides of an agar plate. Here you can see uh, the animal's first approach over one or two hours is dominated by their olfactory preference for Volatile odors released by the bacterial and C. elegans shows a strong preference for um, Soratia over E. coli. Um, the major volatiles released by Soratia marcescens uh, were um, acetone, dimethyl sulfide, 2 butanone ethyl acetate, and dimethyl disulfide that were identified using solid phase micro extraction, uh, extraction and gas chromatography coupled with mass spectrometry. Of the five um, volatile organic compounds, C. elegans showed a strong preference for a uh, two butanol and uh, acetone uh, at a range of concentrations, but weak or not preference for the other three odorants at the most concentrations. Then uh, they use genetic methods uh, to determine the sen sensory neurons necessary for detections of serratia sor released vol volatiles. They test uh, well characterized C. elegans mutants with defects uh, in the cell's fates of specific chemosensory neurons of bacterial choice assays. Um, uh, these mutations that affect the AWC exhibit, exhibit uh, defective choice behavior while other mutants exhibit will die choice behavior. These results suggest that AWC neurons are important for Soratia marcescens preference. Um, they found that acetone was uh, likely also sensitive um, 
by the EWC neuron because um, genetic mutants that affect uh, these functions file to chemotaxis toward, uh, towards uh, acetone. These results indicate that the EWC neuron drives preference for acetone and two butanone in the presence of background volatiles released by E. coli. Uh, next, uh, they use um, assays in which the odor of serratia marcescens is paired with food deprivations and then other animals are tested for chemotaxis to individual odorants released by Saratia to de determine what component or components best represent it. Taken together, um, they determine that two odorants, acetone and two butanone, are sufficient to represent Saratia to C. elegans and are detected by uh, the EWC sensory neuron. Finally, uh, they investigate uh, the response of the worms after being conditioned with an odor blend. They condition, condition and food deprived worms with a mixture of acetone uh, present in serratia and hyzomic alcohol absent in it, and then a side preference. They hypothesize uh, that worms would not lower their preference for serratia because this blend of acetone and hyzomil would be very different for the odor of serrat serratia. However, uh, they did reduce their preference. In conclusion, uh, knowledge uh, about how C. elegant recognizes uh, natural odors blend is likely to be useful for increased understanding of how evolutionary relief uh, parasit uh, nematodes recognize their human, animal, or plant host, and for developments uh, of regions that could be useful useful for nematode control. <coughs> that is all. Thank you. Hi, we can't see you my screen. Yes. Yes, we see. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I will talk about the paper Fragment an open and extensive, an extensive platform for single particle tracking. Uh, in this paper, they present a Fiji plugins for use in tracking unique and differentiated particles. This it was originally designed to study embryos of C. elegans, but has a wide range of applicability. Applicability of the tool for tracking cells and in variety of biological systems. Uh, fragment has been designed for, for maximum flexibility. The capability of fragment can be tailored by the user through the addition of a specific tracking, detection, visualization, and analysis models. Uh, in figure one, Track uh, mate main entry point is an interactive plugin where tracking is performed using a WSL like view. Uh, we can we can see the, uh, the 
the screen of the of the plugins in the in, in the computer. Uh, and in, in this figure we can see the follow down for C elegance embryos and the resulting 3D three-dimensional uh, plot in, 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 this, in this figure. In, in figure two, in, we can see four ways to, repre to represent the cells tracking result. In, in, this, in these figures, the lineage of the C elegance can be seen as a thick green line, as we can see. Mm. Another representation is the hierarchical graph, the second mode. Mm. Here, the cell's name in the, in the third mode, the cell's names are shown in the graph. Mm. The, the, the track made plugins mm, can show in this mode also. And here, another instance of trusting, trusting. Mm. Alternative four to the two ways. Mm. Three biological systems were studied in this paper. The elegance embryos, fibroblast, and plant cells. We will focus only on the C. elegans result. C. elegans result in, in C. elegans embryos in images was done following the phototoxicity ESMIN protocol using a laser scanning confocal microscope as image device. In this acquisition which was made is two minutes for this and last two hours starting from the first anaphase. Uh, the light dose is calculated as the total energy deposited on the sum sample for the one acquisition. That is that formula. Okay? Uh, P is the, is the laser power, the T is the pixel world times, and e equatorial is the number of pixels in the envious equatorial planes, and N set slices is the number of set slices scan. Uh, they investigate how photo damage impact cells divisions synchrony and cells cycle length. They focus on the A B descender. In two hours, the A B lineage was made five division, as we can see here. One, two, three, four, five. And the plot in show nine embryos were tracked to sample a wide range of the life loss in, in, a, in a column in the in this plot represent a single embryo followed over time and in the horizontal a axis we can see incident energy measurement on microbials for a stack. The track made is a good software for tracking single cells and its lineage and all descendants. The, the table one, the table one in summarize the model type in track made version 3.4 and its function. 
eh, in conclusion, eh, this software eh, is very useful to make eh, single particles, eh, single cells tracking, and we can use in our biological system. For example, in breast cancer. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about this article called uh, Generation of Tumor Asteroids Using a Droplet-Based Microfluidic Device for Photothermal Therapy. In, in this study, the authors uh, proposed a, a new way to generate asteroids and um, because uh, drug efficiencies tend to be overestimated in monolayer culture. Uh, for example, uh, the half maximal inhibitory concentration of paclitaxel, which is a drug active against tumors, was found to be two orders of magnitude greater in a three-dimensional culture. That's why it is important to recreate the the in vivo conditions, the 3D asteroids, because they simulate the cell-to-cell -cell interactions and cell-to-matrix interactions as well. So, um, how did they um, uh, how did they produce these asteroids? So they use a uh, micro droplets, as you can see here, the microfluidic device, which has an inlet for the oil phase, which is the fluorinated oil, and uh, and and also an inlet for cells suspension. Uh, here you see in a zoom in uh, how the droplets are formed um, in this architecture of the flow focusing device. And um, they control the amount of cells, the concentration of cells to be able to control the size of these asteroids. As you can see, the two more asteroids are generated. And they also want to test the effect of these nanocomposites, which are going to be used as photothermal therapy for these uh, uh, applied to these egg uh, tumor cells from glioblastoma. Okay, so first they here you see how they control the size of the droplets. Here you see the droplet diameter, um, and it can be modulated according to the oil flow rate, which is represented here. And it's um, the more you increase the oil flow rate, then you decrease the size of your droplet. Then uh, you can, and here is how they also variate uh, by controlling the oil flow rate. They also variate the number of cell, the cell number inside the droplets. And here um, they vary the cell concentration, and then that's how they uh, control the asteroid size. So they characterize this asteroid size, and uh, here in the supplementary information, we can see how they classified the in the cell asteroids from the cell aggregates or the, the empty droplets and the cells units according to this relation between the diameter and the and this shape index, which they calculate. Okay. Here is um, the atomic um, the force. Uh, atomic microscope images, they were acquired in order to characterize these nanocomposites. So the, the nanocomposites that they produce, uh, where they are this graphene oxide, uh, the original, you hear in the skin A, you can see the shape of it. And then when it's reduced and, and functionalized uh, by chemical reactions, then it uh, the size decreases and, and the shape de and the shape changes, as you can see here by these um, images. So in the in the first one, the graphene oxide it has a size of a uh, hundred or one hundred fifty nanometers, but then in the second, uh, you can see that the shape has changed and now it has a size a round shape and a size of fifty to sixty nanometers. Uh, here you see the the steps 
for this fabrication, uh, for the, the functional func functionalization of this compound, and by the spectrum uh, obtained by the uh, Fourier transform um, IR uh, equipment, then we see the spectrum and how it changes according to the new uh, bonds that are formed. And then they also measure the zeta potential to see the charge of these compounds, as you can see here. And finally, they um, irra irradiated these compounds and they uh, see how the temperature increases according to uh, the concentration of these nanocomposites. And they also measure the cell viability when this irradiation is off. And you can compare it when the radiation is on. So the radiation is at 800 nanometers. And uh, then um, they, they saw that it has an effect on the cells. So here we see uh, the cells are marked with phalloidine in order to, to see the, the cytoskeleton. And here you see without these nanocomposite, how the asteroid uh, is, uh, the, how the morphology, how it is. And then here they also used uh, for the nanocomposite, they also label it with fluorescence, with green fluorescence. And finally, the DAPI2 um, mark the nuclei of the cells. So with, you can see that in the scheme B, with the nanocomposite, how the shape of the asteroid changes and mm, the cells have uh, uptaken this uh, compound. So you see also the life and death, the, the life with the calcein uh, fluorescence and the dead cells with the um, ethidium homo homodimer. Um, they also perform these uh, facts in order to classify the cells between life and death. And uh, they finally, they um, compare these, um, they also make this, um, they measure the nerite, uh, uh, the length of the nerites, and uh, they apply a neurotoxin, and they saw the effects of this uh, neurotoxin in the cells. And uh, finally, I would like to show you just this uh, video that they share in the supplementary information, how they control the size of the droplets uh, by changing the oil flow rate and they measure the, fre the frequency. Okay, thank you very much. If we don't. I can hear you, Camilo. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, you you hear me? No? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, in this case, I present uh, this uh, interesting uh, paper, but uh, uh, used uh, as the similar uh, topic in the, the, the last week uh, paper, but uh, use of the different uh, type of cells. Okay, um, the cells uh, use the beta cells, uh, different cells. Uh, uh, become uh, stem cells, same. Okay, uh, the beta cells of pancreas is the uh, important uh, cell line for a study on uh, diabetes pathology and use uh, for um, currently uh, uh, understand uh, the, the better reaction of the testing drugs or and the precision medicine on the uh, different strategy for understand uh, 
the pathology, okay? Uh, in, in this case, uh, compare the, uh, the classic uh, uh, cell sculpture uh, method and uh, use the uh, two uh, micro device uh, for fabricate in the first step, uh, organize and after uh, uh, grow the, the organize in the other micro device, okay? Uh, you can see the models uh, here, but uh, in the figure in the part head, uh, use the, the chambers or, or or walls for fabricate the uh, organites that is uh, the more similar, but uh, use uh, in another time in our laboratory. And after uh, wrote the, the spheroids in in, in these models uh, for uh, different states in uh, along the uh, you can see here uh, the dates of uh, protocol for the different states cells in the uh, study in the beta cells model in the state, in the state two, okay? Uh, next, uh, the first uh, compare in the uh, conventional uh, to be uh, growth cells uh, and uh, you can see uh, the differences of the days and the uh, take a marker uh, in the, the the time of uh, along um, of the protocol differentiate okay uh, it is interesting but, but the glucagon is you can see in the conventional uh, growth cells along in the different stage. Okay, uh, after uh, use of the strategy for uh, microfluidic devices, uh, you can see uh, how uh, grow the, the, the different uh, concentrations uh, for fabricated the organoids. Uh, and after uh, the organoids is uh, into the, the other model of chip, but uh, the study it's, it's more easy uh, use uh, uh, different analyze for example uh, immunology or or other uh, strategy for uh, can see other markers uh, in this case uh, look in the in the more uh, beta cells but uh, in the strategy for construct the first uh, cells uh, with uh, uh, organites and the uh, 2D uh, grow conventional uh, culture, okay? And you can see that the different markers and the organite produce uh, the glucagon and the palmolite and, uh, and insulin, and the, this is the beta cells and uh, this, uh, you can see the, the others markers for uh, comprobate the, the, this differentiation is it's the good performance. Uh, after uh, comparing the in, in different dates and uh, uh, compare the, the, the two strategies for only microfluidics use, uh, and you can see here uh, the the most performance and, and, and secretion and the insulin and it is very important for uh, after uh, you, uh, they uh, propose the similar uh, strategy for uh, one achieves uh, one uh, patient and uh, study for reaction and re uh, resistance insulin and resistant drugs or or different. Uh, the, the, this this tool is is, is very important for a, a future uh, analyze uh, patients. Okay, uh, in and the finish and uh, uh, see and the how they and the viability cells and and show uh, uh, how uh, the be achieved is the it's more is is improve the performance for the experiments and, and see more biomarkers.
Uh, okay. Uh, that is all. Thanks.